Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson here with my co-host and producer yes. of the Model Health Show, the very talented, lovely Jade Harrell. What's up, Jade? What's going on, Sean? Ah, yes. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you today? Thank you. I am emphasized. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, 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 that, I wasn't expecting that. I know. I know. Tell me about it. What does that mean? Well, I'm excited with emphasis. Mm, emphasized, huh? <laughs> emphasized. Okay. I can roll with that. It's not a condition. That. It's not a <laughs> It sounded a like it's something. Right, right. Like, how did you catch that? Right, right. I'm emphasized. You need to give me a protocol. I like it. I like it. It's turning a frown upside down. <laughs> That's right. Right? Make it something that sounds bad. It's really it's good, though. something good. Like, like the song bad. Exactly. Right? Michael Jackson, dun, he was like, dun, dun. you knew it. That's and he was it. like, who bad? Right. right? So you remember Re- Wesley Snipes was in that video? Yes, little fun fact. They actually asked Prince to be in that video. And he declined? Yes, he was like, he's not going to be telling me right. your butt is mine. <laughs> right. Not going to say that to me. Right. They so just a little, little fun fact. On. You guys I can go look it. that up. Prince actually <laughs> talked about it on the interview himself. Yeah, little, miss him. little random fun fact. So yeah. everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to the show today. We've got an incredible, incredible oh, yeah? episode coming up for you guys. A good friend of mine is on, mm. and he is Hashtag superstar. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bad. Right. Who's bad? You knew. <laughs> All right. So, really quickly, guys, every single day for the last four years, by my bedside, I have Ease Magnesium. Mm-hmm. This is a topical application, a, a transdermal application of magnesium. Why does this matter? Well, over 325 biochemical processes depend on magnesium. When you're deficient in magnesium, that is 325 things your body cannot do properly. If at all, right? So it's incredibly important and over 80% of the industrialized world is deficient in magnesium. Chronically. Don't let me forget the word chronic. Right. All right. Oh, wait. Shout out to Dr. Dre, maybe? But chronically (laughs) deficient in magnesium. So please understand that. This is so important to your health and your vitality. It's known as this kind of anti-stress mineral. But one of the ways that it really works is it binds to your ATP, this adenosine triphosphate, what you know as your body's energy currency. It binds to that to actually become the biologically active form of it. So you don't actually have energy in the form of this ATP until it binds with magnesium. So literally the energy your body experiences that you experience as a human being it requires magnesium to be present. So That's how important it is. It's in the waiting room like, okay, so when are we going to go? <laughs> We're ready to roll. Let's get, let's get right. it going. <laughs> so with that said, food first, mm-hmm. supplementation uh, is a viable option, oral supplementation, but you have to be careful. You cannot adequately get your body's levels um, to the place that they need to be, an optimal place, because of the fact there's something called bowel tolerance, where if you take even a little bit too much, it will cause diarrhea and flush uh, from your system, you know, eva- basically evacuate your body. <laughs> right. And f- also with that, it's going to pull other mm-hmm. nutrients out mm-hmm. of your system as well. So the most effective way to do this is with the transdermal application, and I do it because it works. So whether this is for something that might give you a little bit more energy, a better sleep, or an energy not in the form of this is going to stimulate you. This is a natural uh, reset or balance or homeostasis is achieved in your body. But a lot of people use it for relaxation right before bed, which is what I do. Mm -hmm. And also this is great for eliminating pain because magnesium is important in so many processes with muscles and muscle tension, nerve function. Uh, So make sure that you get your hands on this. It's something that's definitely deserves to be right there by your bedside or something that you take with you when you travel. That's what I do for Mm -hmm. sure. So Mm -hmm. head over, check them out. It's easemagnesium.com forward slash model. So that's E-A-S-E magnesium dot com forward slash model you're gonna get 15 percent off yes. over there exclusive you're not gonna find that anywhere else <laughs> exclusive alert yeah. so make sure head over there check them out right now mm-hmm. and also i want to let you guys know we're getting fit right now we're yes, talking we we're talking to one of the most fit guys in the business I'm today not to look at him. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that comes along with that is oftentimes today is thinking outside of the box yeah Nobody is better at that than on it, right? They're really the founders of this idea of unconventional training, really pushing into culture these different training equipments that you many people have never seen before, like the uh, battle ropes, right? right? Like right. the steel maces uh-huh. and steel clubs. Yeah. I've got a steel club in my house, exactly. right? I've got a couple actually. Nobody you know? wants to mess with you. So right these now. are these are things that have been used thousands of years ago in warrior training. Mm-hmm. Right. And so they, they brought these to the market as like you can use this to get 
super fit, mm-hmm. right? And so one of the things we've been really pushing into culture lately and really talking about on the show is high intensity interval training. Yep. And these pieces of equipment, you know, even kettlebells as well, are great tools for you to employ different strategies for HIT. And we know, again, we put, we'll put some episodes in the show notes. If you want to get your body in the best shape possible, you got to have that high intensity interval training as part of your repertoire. So make sure to head over there, check them out. They've got the battle ropes, mm-hmm. they've got the steel clubs, <laughs> they've got the zombie bells, the kettlebells, but then they've got like these primal bells with these weird like monkey faces I on them. They, they got legend bells right, with right. like, I think it's a, a, a Sasquatch on there. <laughs> and then they also have a special edition Iron Man kettlebell. Hashtag dope Seriously. sauce. Yeah. Hashtag Seriously. dope sauce. So make sure to head over and check them out. And plus, of course, they've got all the human optimization supplements. And you get 10% off all of your supplements and foods there as well. So head over there, check them out. Onit.com forward slash model. That's O-N-N-I-T dot com forward slash M-O-D-E-L for 10% off. Now let's get to the iTunes review of the week. All right. This one says best show bar none. Five stars. I am continually impressed by the quality guests Sean finds for the show and how he can run right with them. Sean and Jade have an amazing dynamic and always bring out the best of their guests. If you want to know what you need to be doing to take control of your health from every possible angle, this show is a must listen. Thank you, Sean and Jade, for all you do. Keep on bringing the awesomeness. Bringing the awesomeness. Thank you so much. (laughs) And I promise I will definitely do that. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you so much for taking the time to leave us the review on iTunes. It means so much to me. Thank you, Jeff Agostinelli. Perfect. Shout out to Jeff. Thank you so much, my man. And everybody, thank you for leaving those reviews. Truly, truly do appreciate it, guys. So keep them coming. And of course, hit the subscribe button to the show if you have not done so already. Make sure you subscribe so that you get updates. And again, if you haven't left the review, please head over there and do so because we will recognize that. I appreciate it. Thank now, on that note, let's get to our special guest Specialist and our topic right. of the day. Today's guest is a good friend of mine, the one and only Michael Morelli. And he is the founder of Morelli Fit, and he has a ton of certifications. Certified personal trainer who's helped hundreds of thousands of people transform their lives with his online diet and training programs. He's literally one of the best people in the world at this, Love it. if not the best. Hey. And he's a social media sensation as well with nearly 4 million followers. And Morelli is one of the world's most popular online fitness experts. And he's here hey. on the Model Health Show hey. to rock the house. I'd like to welcome my friend, Michael Morelli. How are you doing today, man? I am awesome. Thank you so much, Sean. Oh, man, it's my pleasure, man. I'm, this was a long time coming, man. We've known each other for a little while now. And I'm excited to have you on and to share your superhero origin story, man. T- tell us a little bit about... What got you interested in the field of health and fitness in the first place? And make sure to share the part about staying at your mom's house again. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. So I hit a, I hit rock bottom about you know four years ago. I, I was at a point in my life. I remember carrying two bags of groceries up two flights of stairs, and I got up the stairs and I was winded. I was out of breath, and I'm like, something's got to give. And from that point forward, I made it my mission to really put forth some effort into my health and fitness. It also was a little spiritual, I will say. Um, But I started to clean up my diet first, right? Um, I started, you know, going through uh, the plethora of diet information. I mean, you name it, paleo and low carb and no carb. And I had tried everything previous to that. So um, I had a personal transformation uh, of my own. I lost 27 pounds of body fat. I went from about 185 pounds down to about 150 or so. And I went from literally 27% or 25% body fat down to eight, saw my abs for the first time in my life. And I was like, yes. And I remember I said to myself, I said, if I can do this after lots of trial and error, I can show other people how to do this too. But then I thought to myself, Sean, I said, who's going to take me seriously, Mm. right? I don't, I mean, all I have is a personal transformation. So immediately I'm like, all right, what's out there? How can I get more information? And in the next six months, I got five certifications. Literally, I grasped onto everything. I was a sponge. Incredible story, man. You know, this is the thing is that so many people have, um, and I, I just talked about this recently with another incredible, incredible story, but you can be selfish in that, you know, you get these results for yourself and you just kind of live your little life in your little shell and you're like, you know, I'm too sexy for, (laughs) you know, right. But you had it as a mandate that I needed to share this. 
And this is one of the things that makes you so good at what you do. People could pick up that you care. And it's really, um, it's something that kind of radiates from you. And so with that said, so you shifted gears and you started doing what? So you started like in the gym. Where did you go from there? Kind of like, how did you get from there to where you are today? Yeah, so... During that time, I was going through a bankruptcy. I went through a divorce. I had to move back in with my mom at like 31 years old. So you can imagine, right? Um, not, not, not fun. I'm like, hey, mom, I need to, I need to move in. And my mom's always been there for me. But I literally moved into her basement and I started stringing together exercises. And I didn't know that it was high intensity devil training at the time. I was doing burpees and mountain climbers and renegade rows. And so that's the exercise component that I followed. Um, but I remember back four years ago, and I know this is the part of the story that you wanted me to get into. I, um, I was debating on whether or not I should post a video on YouTube and really put myself out there. I told my mom, I'm like, I want to help a lot of people. And you know, pretty soon it's going to be millions. And she's like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> I, and, and I, I remember like it was yesterday and the video is still up on YouTube. The channel is really fit. I was wobbling back and forth from side to side. So nervous in my mom's basement like this. I mean, I, so much so there's probably a groove in the floor, Sean, like literally, yeah. even though I could have just pushed delete or I could have re-recorded. Yeah. Nevertheless, I pushed publish and it's a, it's like a six minute ab workout that took me six minutes to get to because the intro was so long. I was so nervous. <laughs> but from that point forward, I just stayed consistent with my content. I surrounded myself with really good, talented people, people like yourself who've mentored me. Um, and I just kept consistent with the with the content. YouTube turned into Instagram, it turned into Facebook, it turned into Periscope, and now we've culminated almost 4 million followers. And you know, you mentioned in my intro, that's that's there's no fluff there. In the last 4 years, we've helped direct through direct products, programs, and services over 200,000 people get in shape. Mm. Now, maybe millions more who have been following me, but through direct sales of products, programs, and services, we've helped over 200,000 people. Incredible, man. Such incredible story. And this is, I, I wanted you to talk about that a little bit for the aspiring person, you know, for the person who's kind of hit their own rock bottom, maybe not with their health, but maybe they find themselves in a, in a tight financial spot or a relationship spot. And I mean, like literally, like you just said it, 31, moving back with moms, you're not going to, you know, like if you're not going to get the girl necessarily. Like that's a more <laughs> complicated situation to be in, you know. And so, but from that place, being able to birth this huge, huge uh, entity that you have today and just the following and the reach that you have and the success and, I, you know, your, your amazing home and your amazing family in such a seemingly short amount of time is just remarkable. And also when people see you physically that you were out of shape, nah. And that's what's possible, man, when you really get focused. And one of the things you do as well, not just with the nutrition and the, and the fitness, but you also talk about that internal game as well. And we're going to come back and talk a little bit about that. But I want to first talk about your new book. It's called The Sweet Potato Diet, right? Mm -hmm. The Sweet Potato <laughs> Diet. And in it, you feature one of the world's most loved foods. And this is in a time where super low-carb and no-carb diets are being, being very popularized. And you actually say that carb cycling is the best way to transform our health and our body. So what is carb cycling and how does it work? So carb cycling is, is really just that. It's cycling your carbs from high to low um, in, in, in a seven day feeding schedule so that you get the best of both worlds. You preserve lean muscle mass because uh, some of the days you're in an anabolic state or in a surplus, which is also a high carb day. And then you drop your carbs really, really low, which is more of a catabolic state or a deficit. And so you're burning fat. And so the idea is, is that we manipulate our carbs from high to low so that our body and our metabolism never has an opportunity to adapt to the conditions we impose on it because you know what I know, right? You get on that thousand calorie diet, you're well below your TDEE, but guess what happens? You lose weight for a little bit, but then all of a sudden you plateau and then you start reintroducing carbs and you blow up like a blimp. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's that you know, the low carb diets for extended periods of time, they drive me crazy because people are scared of carbs. They think carbs are the enemy. Cer certainly there are carbs that you should be afraid of and scared of, but quality carbs in a cycled format really produce the best of both worlds. We never want to sacrifice. We, you know, we all want to be in shape and most of us are trying to drop body fat. We never want to sacrifice muscle for the sake of, of fat because what we know is, is that the more muscle mass on your body, the elevate, uh, the higher your RMR, your BMR, the more fat you're going to burn and the more sustained you're going to be long term. 
So this is really important because a lot of people who do like a crash diet, you know, they quote crash diet. Does that even sound good? Well. <laughs> Does that even sound good? Any kind of Coming crashing. from someone who was ready for something to happen quickly and, uh, and, and impactfully. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Let's crash. I, I, crash is not, <laughs> it's not a good idea, but we're on but these I kind of low calorie diets. Yeah. And what that does to your metabolism, you know, and so he mentioned this carb cycling to be something that's really uh, important and very uh, powerful Mm -hmm. for shifting your metabolism and keeping it changing. Because that's one of the things our body's always looking for patterns, right? And it gets set, you know, with a consistent fuel source and that can start to plateau your results as well. But one of the big things as well that, I, you know, I've mentioned this very uh, few times on the show, but if we do, the ketogenic diets are popping right now. And for good reason, there are a lot of great benefits and I've got friends who are all about it and I've done stents as well, but there can, you can run into some problems, especially more so for women. Okay. And I know Michael can speak to this as well because women also need a little bit more carbohydrate to fortify and to support that body, that body fat. That's mm-hmm. actually important. Mm-hmm. But the big thing here is, and also for guys as well, is that going low carb for too long for some people can really do a number on crashing, there's that word again, your testosterone, Uh all right? So carbohydrates are a part of this function with um, your hormones, like thyroid hormone, thyroid function overall, and your testosterone. And these are kind of governing forces for lean body mass and for your metabolism. So we need to be mindful of that. And cycling these carbs is a great idea. So we get a really good principle or background with what carb cycling looks like. But I'm curious really quickly about the the book is centers ar- around the sweet potato, <laughs> right, as the carb choice. So what's so special about it though, as far as the sweet potato is concerned and what are the benefits of sweet potato? Sure. So take you back just a, a couple of years. I've been carb cycling now for a couple of years and it wasn't always with just the sweet potato. I have about four or five carbohydrate sources that I stick to. Um, now it's pretty much 100% sweet potatoes. But, you know, if you don't like sweet potatoes, it's not like you can't make this work because we've got white rice, we've got steel cut oats, gluten-free, um, organic steel cut oats, we've got quinoa, and we've got the white potato. We can rely on those as well. Um, I started experimenting with the sweet potato about two years ago, and I didn't like them before. So my aunt right. used to make sweet potatoes at um, at uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner. And she would make them with the walnuts and the marshmallows and real, you know, sweet and sugary. And I didn't like them then. All of a sudden, I had them cubed up really, really tiny, dropped in a pan with coconut oil, and my life had changed forever, <laughs> mm-hmm. Sean. Like forever. Like I eat sweet potatoes. You've seen me on Snapchat. Yeah. I I have a sweet potato brownies in my fridge right now that I had with my coffee Ooh. this morning. I had two fistful of sweet potatoes uh, at breakfast already this morning. So like it is my jam. <laughs> like so to get into the question, you know, why the sweet potato? I didn't know when I was experimenting with the sweet potato, why at the time? Mm. Then I started doing some research and I'm like, holy crap, what a superfood this is. I mean, it is nutrient dense, chalked full of vitamins and minerals. Not to mention, it's very satiating, which means it's gonna keep you fuller longer. It's gonna fight off and ward off cravings. You ever try to eat two fists of sweet potatoes? Do that and see if you're hungry afterwards. Right. Very, very satiating. You know, even one. So true. So true, man. You know, it's one of those. It's such a dense source of nutrition. And also, of course, it has the fiber included as well. You know, you have that along with some uh, high quality proteins. And it's like a staple of so many of the of the kind of big health stars out there as diets. You know, the sweet potato is one of those secrets. One of the things I want to share really quickly before you get into a little bit more with the nutrition that we can find in the sweet potato. uh, There was a study that was published in 2014 that found that. Uh, 122 participants showed improved long-term metabolic control of blood sugar. This was measured by something called the hemoglobin A1C, or A1C for short. And so that's the kind of a marker of what's going on with your blood sugar long-term by eating sweet potatoes, all right? Sweet potatoes. Right. And it's even the sweet is in the word, right? (laughs) But because it's a little bit more nutrient-dense than some of these other carb sources that are out there, And it has this really interesting, if you look at the doctrine of signatures, Mm -hmm. right? The doctrine of signatures, which is this kind of, um, it's it's known as a sign of nature. That's what it translates to mean. And it basically is this idea, this belief system that every food in nature will tell you what it's good for based on the way it looks, tastes, smells, or how it functions in nature, right? And so this food kind of looks like a 
a pancreas a little, <laughs> right? Kind of looks like a pancreas. Nice, maybe, for sure, for maybe, sure. maybe a liver. Maybe kind of some of them get a little twisted up. Maybe like your intestines, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And what do you know? It's benefit Digestive beneficial system. for all of those mm -hmm. different organs. So just wanted to point that out. And many long lived cultures, like in Okinawa, it's a staple in the in their diet. And also, for, so not just long lived cultures, but also fighting starvation and malnutrition, like in countries. Uh, like Uganda, for example, far healthier and more fortifying than something like white rice. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of the nutrients that we can find in sweet potato. Yeah. So really quickly, you, you touched on glycemic, right? The glycemic load of a sweet potato is very, very low. And that's also what makes it a really good carbohydrate for fat loss. It manages insulin levels. It's not going to spike your insulin or your blood sugar, which is really, really good if you're trying to drop body fat. In terms of you know, nutrients, vitamins, minerals. I've got a list here. In fact, there's so many, so many to, to even remember, you know, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, K, thiamine, um, niacin. Uh, did I say that right? Niacin? That's correct. Yeah. B3. Yep. Uh, vitamin B6, folate, B12. I mean, you name it, calcium, iron, magnesium, which you talked about in your intro, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, zinc. I mean, it's insane. And I didn't know this two years ago. And now you know, fast forward a year, I started to dig in. I'm like, this is it. It is the sweet potato diet. Because when I first started writing this book, it was simply just a book about carb cycling. Mm. But for me, after helping 200,000 people take their fitness to the next level, it was how can I simplify this, right? Carb cycling for a lot of people is really scary. It's like, oh my gosh, what carbs, what do I do? Well, if you've got a fist and you've got a sweet potato, you can pretty much do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're going to punch the sweet potato, <laughs> but I, I totally understand. It's just a simple measurement practice, right? You And I want you to talk about this because you've been so successful at helping people to transform their bodies without such a focus on counting calories, weighing their food. You know, I still have people asking me about that, about, you know, what do you think about weighing your food if you're trying to, well, if you're in some kind of a really rigorous thing where you're in a competition, maybe. You know, but I know many athletes today who are competing in bodybuilding competitions, things like that, who are not weighing their food. So let's talk a little bit about that. What do you what are your feelings on people like being so neurotic about counting calories? So I think you can become very obsessed with it. And I think for some people it works. Some people need the regimented. They need to know, OK, down to the crumb. Hmm. Other people are busy. A lot of people are busy. More people are busy. And so for me, it was simplifying this so that. I can reach as many people as possible. Because what I know is, is that a lot of those, oh, if I've got to measure it and I've got to weigh it and I've got to prep and I've got to do all this stuff, it just gets in the way of getting going. And this is really just measuring your foods, your palm, your fist, and your thumb for fats. And you can do this entire thing just with your hands as tools. You know, I got to share right. this we really quickly. Mm -hmm. So this book, The Sweet Potato Diet, is just an absolutely beautiful book. I love the way that it looks, and the recipes are mind-blowing. They're scary good, guys. So make sure that you check this book out. But something else that I wanted to mention, earlier you, you talked about some of the nutrients that you could find in there, but the vitamin A content is off the charts. And uh, there was a study that was published a little while ago that found that vitamin A content found in our system is correlated with our lifespan. So kind of like the lower amounts that people had, the more likely they were to basically die earlier, mm -hmm. right? So it's one of those little interesting things to keep in mind, you know, and again, long live cultures like the Okinawans utilizing this as a staple in their diet, it's not an accident. But of course, we always wanna be mindful that this is still based on you as an individual, you know, maybe a smaller amount of sweet potato might be ideal, maybe a larger amount for some people. I know I've had phases where I went ham. Oh, I went ham on sweet potatoes and all the different varieties. Shout out to the Japanese sweet potato, okay. by that's the way. That's my favorite. I bet that's it is. Favorite. It's it's hashtag cake potato, right? It just <laughs> tastes like cake, man. It's so delicious. But so I wanted to ask you, what about the difference, right? A yam and a sweet potato. Thank what you. is there a difference with these? Yeah, yeah. So the yam is not cultivated in the US, right? A yam is actually very coarse and hairy, whereas a sweet potato is nice and smooth. So all of the yams in the US are actually sweet potatoes, right? The, the, the yams grow in tropical climates. And so we've sort of been fooled a little bit, but I wanna take you back really quickly because we didn't talk about 
the fact that sweet potatoes are actually anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Um, they're, they're known to reverse uh, arthritis. They're also known to fight the free radicals that cause cancer. They've reversed uh, their studies that show that they reverse autoimmune disorders. I mean, we can go on and on about this. And I guess I get so excited and so passionate about it because, you know, like there was the year of the quinoa and the year of the kale. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, Sean, this year, this is the year of the sweet potato, my friend. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, let's go. And you are the man behind it, bro. I love let's this. Let's go, right? I even got T-shirts. Wait till you see the T-shirts that we've got. It's uh, it's the shape of a potato, the sweet potato. Uh-huh. And it says sweet potato diet in it. And it's colored and it's on the front. Oh, it's it's so great. <laughs> yeah. You go ahead and send me one when we get yeah, off make it of, the, of the episode today. <laughs> So another thing that's, uh, again, kind of highlighted in your work and that people follow you for, you know, we're talking about millions of people following you on the different social media channels, is your focus on mindset. And you actually layered in some of that information into the sweet potato diet in the book itself. And the fact that, you know, the principles behind body transformation, including what you call emotional weight gain, right? Yeah. Emotional weight gain. Can you talk a little bit about what that means? Yeah, oftentimes we're binging and eating. It's mindless eating. It's because we're bored or we've got emotional attachments to food and food is is the comfort. Um, and, you know, I was going back and forth and I, I was like, should I put that in the book? Should I not put, in, hmm. put it in the book? And it's become so much a part of my life. You know, I talk about awareness. You know, I just had to go there with it because I know so many people are suffering with it. Um, and, and I guess a quick tip for your for your audience is that if if you find yourself mindlessly eating or bored, sit back and just watch the thoughts. Don't judge, don't criticize, don't condemn. Just sit back and watch and just do that. Observe and nothing else. That's the first step for me. It's really, really helped me because I've I've been through it, right? I have those days where I'm stressed out, the kids are upset, and where do I go? Right? I go to the pantry, you know? Yeah. You know, this is really important takeaway for today that needs to be uh, layered into all of our work if we're talking about helping people to transform their health and transform their bodies. You have this statement in the book. You say that beneath your choices are emotions, not usually very much logic, right? So logically, I'm going to eat the healthy proteins and the healthy fats and the high-quality carbohydrates. Emotionally, that long john looks fantastic, right? With the uh-huh. sprinkles. Those sprinkles, like the sprinkles basically spelling my name, right? It says sure. Sean on the donut. So oh, why would I not eat it? <laughs> like that's, <laughs> that's not logic. That's emotion. Go ahead. Yeah. And, be, and because I know that, and because I know that that's not going to change for a lot of people, I created some recipes that you can put in place of that donut, right? We've got chocolate chip sweet potato cookies. We've got sweet potato waffles and pancakes and brownies. I'm telling you what, Sean, you have, you decide to make these sweet potato brownies, you're gonna forget all about the Long John, the cream filled donuts and all of it because they are that decadent and that good. Oh what? my goodness. That's do, a challenge. Do you hear this sweet potato brownies? Yeah. I mean, come on now. Right. Um, recently when I was them. out in LA, I went to this fantastic like farm to table place and they had sweet potato donuts. And I was like, yes, please. You know, I went ahead and had some. But it's just understanding that we can, number one, one of the things that we really strive for, and this is what I've done in my practice over the years, and and uh, making it so that people feel comfortable and they feel excited and connected rather than pushing away or feeling some kind of deprivation and, and against what you're trying to share with them is the fact that this can be pleasurable, this experience. And what we do is let's upgrade the ingredients, right? Let's upgrade the quality of that food. So we're not just eating like a, rag, a regular old Homer Simpson style donut. Like we're upgrading the nutritional profile. It's still a donut. Right. Right. This is something for the treat session, mm-hmm. not a cheat. And you also, I love that you talk about that too, uh, the difference. So this actually just talk a little bit about that. You don't like when people talk about cheat meals. Why is that? Um, because you're not cheating. You're rewarding yourself. I mean, if you've been on track and you're following this, then I give you a reward meal on this, uh, on this plan, right? You get to have that. And really, all that's going to do is build resiliency. If you're spot on and you know this, right, you're spot on and you deviate, you put that crap in your body after not having it for a while. And I'll tell you, yeah, you're either you're going out of one end or the other, you know, and you're like, oh, my gosh, that's how that food makes me feel. I don't want that anymore. And so for me, it's like, go ahead, have the reward meal. Yeah. You know, some people are, you know, we're psychologically wired that that's even a problem. Right. So it's just like all or nothing. Like I'm just going to have two slices of iceberg lettuce 
with a, a doppling of bird seed on top. And that's my diet, right? That's all I can eat. And so we really get bound into this deprivation and restriction mentality that if I'm going to be fit and healthy and lose weight, I have to restrict so much of my life. And that can be dangerous because I promise you, we're talking about a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of people who can endure that kind of abuse. You know, we have humans, there's, there's this driving force for us. Number one is to avoid pain. The other one is to move us towards pleasure. We have those things. So if you're trying to mute that pleasure part of your life, it's going to be a big struggle. So I love that you incorporate that. And I call it the treat meal. Mm -hmm. You know, you call it the, um, the reward, you know, so putting a, a, a frame on it like that and upgrading the ingredients, making sure we got really high quality treats available and just enjoy yourself. Yeah. And you have to get to a point where we're, we don't want to end up at war with ourselves. You mention all the time about being having grace. You know, the person that we need to get to that goal needs us to be supportive. Yeah. And we're talking about ourselves. But when we get into that, that deprivation, that resentment and that regret, and it's just you add the stress and the tension of trying to get there. And then if you fail or it's always in those those contrasting opposite conflicting terms and yeah. and, and um yeah totally i mean i think the, the thing is sean and you and i both agree right i'm, I'm not trying to sell a diet book I, yeah. I don't want you to to be on a diet for 30 days and lose a little bit of weight right i'm trying to sell a lifestyle i'm not trying i'm choosing to sell a lifestyle this is a lifestyle book and i know that in order for me to help you create a lifestyle i've got to help you overcome the barriers mm-hmm. i've got to make sure that you're not restricting yourself I got to make sure that you're able to eat your sweets and your treats because that's how you're going to create long-term success. That's how you're going to be happy. The, the, the deprivation and the starvation and all that stuff, that's short term. You and I, we have a mission to change the world forever. And the only way that we do that is by introducing something that is sustainable and that creates long-term health benefits. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. man. Absolutely. So with the sweet potato diet, it's also layered with real food, right? That's really the foundation of it. The sweet potato is like a highlight. It's a feature mm-hmm. of this incredible program. And there's principles that, that we abide by as a, as a culture here with the Model Health Show that are in the book as well. So I really love all of the recipes in there. They get a huge, like, you know the emoji, the thumbs up emoji? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> huge thumbs up, for sure. So a, a, big, a big part of your... Uh, program and what you're pushing out into culture and helping so many people with is definitely the fitness aspect. So let's talk a little bit about that. Exercise is a big component of what you do. So what do you recommend as far as exercise is concerned? So good question, right? So I haven't touched on this a lot um, because the sweet potato diet in and of itself is going to do the heavy lifting. Your biomarkers, your health, you are going to feel, you're going to be more, you're going to be full of energy. You're not going to crash because you're gonna be full of carbs every single day. Now with that, exercise is a huge component of just, you know, vitality and, you know, the people that exercise studies show that you're gonna live longer, more vibrantly. So in here, there is an exercise component. Three minutes I start you out at a day, Mm. three minutes, that's it. I give you body weight exercises to do in your living room. Again, we're removing all of the barriers and the roadblocks. If I say, hey, you've got a carb cycle and you're going to have sweet potatoes and you're going to do all these things on the nutrition side, but then I want you to get to the gym and I want you to go there for 60 to 90 minutes and I want you to do these exercises, the sets, the reps, and I want you to do high intensity, then I want you to do list training and all these things, what happens? You don't do the diet. The nutrition is going to work. So let's focus there and keep the exercise minimal just to keep you moving. And then we start building it in. So it goes from three minutes to five minutes to 10 minutes to 15 minutes to just 30 minutes every other day. That's it. Wow. You know, this reminds me of uh, an interview that is coming up for everybody that I don't even want to give this away, but somebody dropped this knowledge bomb that there was a study done for a year. It was a year long study and the participants were doing essentially like 45 minutes a day, like five days a week of exercise, and they only lost five pounds of cardio, traditional cardio exercise, and which was a cumulative, like comparable to somebody just dieting. Like the people who dieted lost more weight in the study, just from diet alone without the exercise. So I'm so glad that you brought this up because this is where to really focus. They say, of course, this is, 
well-known statement now that abs are made in the kitchen. But that's where health <laughs> is really that. made. It's where our fitness is really made, you know, because it's really what are the building blocks? How are you creating, what are you creating your metabolism out of, your metabolic organs? What is your thyroid made of, right? Is it made of that donut that I talked about <laughs> earlier? Or is it made with higher quality foods, you know, high quality proteins, high quality carb sources like sweet potatoes, things like that. The, we're literally getting to choose what our tissues are made of. So now let's move on a little bit. Now, say somebody's already got their nutrition locked in. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend for exercise? Like what is a big thing that you're out there uh, talking about that, you know, I, because again, I see you, you know, hitting uh, so many different people with this information. So what are, what is the ex exercise protocol that you like to promote the most? Is it long distance cardio every day? Michael, no, is that you, what you did to get it's fit? It's not. It's Let's not. talk about it. It's, it's short burst. It's high intensity interval training. I do like the idea of, 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 of a foundation with weights, right? I do believe that there is a need for strength, for strength based work. Hmm. Combine that with some high intensity interval training, 15 minutes. That's all you need. You don't need to go into you know, more than that, unless like you talked about earlier, maybe you're competing or, you know, you're trying to sculpt a physique and you're trying to get big round shoulders for a show, then it makes sense to spend more time on those body parts. But for longevity and real lasting health, quick foundation, quick, quick, some weights and then some hit. That's what I suggest. Perfect. Perfect. Now let's tie all this, all this stuff together. So how does carb cycling play into a fitness routine? We'll say that somebody actually is, um, experienced like they 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 were lifting weights a few times a week they're doing a session or two of hit training what is the ideal way to do the carb cycling should we be doing higher carb on the day that we're lifting or what just break this down for us man let us know yeah that's a really great question question so yeah so the higher the intensity of the day the more carbs in theory you should eat because you're going to need the energy right so i always structure a carb cycle my highest carb days are, are on my highest output days, meaning leg day, right? Yeah. You got leg day, that's a high carb day. Now, you start to go into some of those other body parts, even on the low carb days, you're still fine. But definitely, like if you're going and you're, like you said, if you got, you've got some athletes on here that are doing marathons or, you know, they're running a few miles or something like that, you definitely want to structure your workouts around or your, your highest intensity workouts around your highest carb days. Perfect, perfect. And that's, of course, this is something that I've used, and I haven't even told you this yet, but I've used this personally for a long time, man. And I, I do this because it works, especially on the days where I am doing, um, putting heavier loads on my body is where I'm going to up, kind of up-level the carbs that I'm taking in. And predominantly over the years, it's been from sweet potatoes, you know, funny enough. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, know, and he also mentioned there's other viable sources, but one of the big reasons why is to support that anabolic hormone production because again i told you at the tail end like really beating yourself down so my good friends that do ketogenic diets they because it's so it's such a glycolytic thing you can't do hit training really you know you maybe it's even shorter smaller little bits and the thing is you really in a way because the diet is so stringent in some aspects you don't need to do as much you know but that kind of takes the fun out of it for some people you know it's just like there's certain things you can't do because it's so glycolytic, you know, like getting in there and doing heavy deadlifts, you know, a couple of times a week even might be too much. You can overload your nervous system and just the healing factor, you know, might be a little bit blunted. Now, there are anomalies. Of course, there are people who can do this stuff and they're good. But for the vast majority of people, you need to have a certain level of a food source that you've evolved consuming for replenishing, replenishing that muscle glycogen. That's a big, big component of it. So one thing I want to mention too, really quickly, Sean, sure. for your audience is that, you know, on your, you know, if you've got legs, for example, I use legs cause that's usually the, the most intense day for a lot of people. You can actually structure most of your carbs for that day before your workout and after your workout. And we know carbs post-workout are an absolute must cause they help shuttle the nutrients into the muscles, right? For faster recovery. Absolutely. So can you take us through an example what a week would look like. You've got different formats in the book, so let me give that caveat. There's different yep. ways that people can do carb cycling. But let's just say, you know, uh, we start the, the week with Monday, leg day. And so take us from there what a carb cycling regimen would look like. Yeah, so Monday would be your highest carb day, right? So for example, and we give you three different cycles in the book. There's a, a quick fire 
uh, a quick fire cycle, which you'd start if you've never done any carb cycling before, you'd start quick fire and then you do that for 30 days. And once you complete that, you go to the second cycle and then you finish with the inferno cycle, which actually has some no carb days, believe it or not you can really torch fat. Think about high carb day and then dropping it to no carbs. And for those that are listening, no carbs just means no starchy carbs. You can have vegetables because we don't count vegetables as carbohydrates, um, only the starch, the starchy stuff. So Monday, leg day, highest carbs, you're gonna have a fist or more of sweet potatoes at every single meal. Now, if you wanna double up and have two fists, uh, for your, um, for your meal before your workout and post-workout, and then just cut the, um, uh, cut the amount in those other meals uh, short a little bit. That's fine. Just because you need the most jam packed energy during that, that time period. But then what would happen on the next day on, for example, Tuesday, right? Maybe you do some list training, maybe you play some basketball, but you're going to cut your carbohydrates in half, right? So instead of a full fist, you're going to just take a half a fist and have a half a fist at every meal. And then you just continue to rotate that. That's a pretty basic cycle. We go more into depth when you get into the book. There's halves and you cut it in half again, just depending on what cycle you're on. And then in the book also, we actually give you examples of workouts and how to structure your carb cycle around various types of workouts if you're uh, an endurance athlete or if you're you know, strength training, uh, et cetera. Got it, got it. And that great example would be today. And also I wanna make a, a important little caveat or side note here. Um, you know, I've seen this firsthand, the benefits of uh, lower carb diets, uh, ketogenic diets, things like that. It's not that you cannot perform doing these things. It's just it's it's more difficult for some people. All right. Now, with that said, uh, your body shifts gears. And th- that's why this is tied in here with the carb cycling. You can have those days where you can even get into a ketogenic state, right, where you're avoiding the carbs for the most part. And so that gives this little kind of boost in changing your body's fuel source, right, over to these ketones. And your body can become very efficient at doing that. Now, some people that are performing at a high level that have adapted their body to doing it, they're doing, they're, there's a process their body has called this gluconeogenesis, where their body is basically creating this glucose because your brain needs a certain percentage of glucose, period, to function. There's nothing else that it could do out of proteins. So the protein sources they're taking in will be able to break that down or your body's tissues, your protein tissues can be broken down to provide that glucose, which, you know, some experts say that's not a problem. Some experts say it's not so good. Yeah. You know, so it's, these are just things to be aware of. And it's really catering things. If you know that you're just going to be sitting around living a life of coasting, you know, like you got a lot of Netflix and chill in your life, but not, this, <laughs> not, not the sex kind, because that's what it really means. But actually the Netflix, watching Netflix and... Chili Willy the penguin. Yes. I'm sorry to break the news oh, to you. Yes. Man. Yes. So <laughs> if you're going to have a very kind of docile lifestyle, then maybe you want to err on the side of lower carbs, no carbs, so-called no carbs. Very difficult to get no carbs, especially if you're eating this important carb source we haven't talked about, which is vegetables, right? Green veggies specifically. Um, so it's really catering things to you. But living an active lifestyle like Michael's promoting, sweet potato diet is right up your alley. So on that note, man, I'm really curious about the results that you've seen with people employing this protocol. Can you share a little bit about that? Like what could people have to look forward to? What kind of results can they look forward to? Yeah, so to touch on what we were talking about with regards to exercise and nutrition and um, sort of what we were talking about before, I just had a message from a guy by the name of Nick and he did no exercise for seven days, started the sweet potato diet and lost seven pounds in seven days Mm. without stepping foot in the gym or doing one bout of exercise. I got a girl, Melissa, who lost 12 pounds in 13 days. I've got three girls. Now we just landed the Women's World Magazine cover. I've got three girls, three, that have lost over 60 pounds in less than six months on the sweet potato diet. I've got another guy named Jake. He lost 100 pounds in less than a year, and now he's a certified personal trainer teaching the sweet potato diet. I can go, Sean, I can go on and on and on. The, 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 the thing that I knew is I needed to create momentum fast mm. because what happens is you get on a diet, you don't see results, and you give up. If you see results fast, you can take that momentum, and that can carry you through. If I'm after lifestyle, sustainability, I know that I've got to create some early momentum. And if I can do that, your chances of sticking with it are much, much greater. So I know 
that this, I mean, right out of the gate, you're going to start dropping body fat. Oh man. You know what people, and one of the things that you do with social media is sharing these stories as well. And people getting to see other people because Michael's a fit guy. You know, you uh, see him yes. like, ah, oh, he's yes. been fit forever. He didn't <laughs> live in his mom's I basement, none of that stuff. But this is why it's important for you to share your story, but also sharing these other stories that you do so well. And, and it's one of the things that attracts people when they see people like them, mm -hmm. right, who are able yes. to achieve these kind of results. And I'm really grateful for you for that, man. And so um, I'm curious, what's the model that you're here to set with the way that you're living your life personally? Hmm, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I'm a father of two. Yeah. And I've got a family and you know, my goal is to, is to continue changing lives. I mean, my goal, when I, I see people no matter where I'm at and I, they, you know, a lot of people look unhealthy. Let's, let's face the reality. A lot of people are overweight. They're sick. I saw a woman at uh, Legoland the other day. She was hacking up. I could tell she was very sickly. Mm. I see people like that now, Sean. And I say to myself, I want to get her to the next level right now. It's just an awareness. You know, it's just an awareness that as I see somebody, it's like, how can I take that person to the next level? So my model is to continue taking myself to the next level, right? Holding myself accountable, sharing my experiences on social media. I'm a father of two. I got a, I've got a, a fiance at home and I've got a dog and I'm building a company and I'm still staying very healthy. I mean, if you don't make health your priority, you're going to make illness your priority at some point. Right. Not mm -hmm. your priority. I shouldn't say that, but you're going to illness yeah. is going to it's going to come. come and then all of a sudden it's like, I wish I would have made health my priority. You know what? You just said something profound. I'm writing that down. <laughs> if you don't make health a priority, you're making illness a priority. That's true. It happens by default. Mm -hmm. It does. It happens it does. by default. And, and you know what? The reality is, is that, you know, oftentimes we don't value our health until we begin to lose it. And then what? It's like, oh, crap. You know, I got, now I've got diabetes. People are like, oh, it's hard. It's hard to go to the gym. It's hard to diet. Well, you know what? How hard is it going to be when you have diabetes? How hard is it going to be when you have an oxygen tank? How hard is it going to be when you've got 10 medications that you're on? Hard now? No, now it's easy. It can get really hard really fast if you don't take action though. Yes, man. And also when you fall into that state, it, it, it is infinitely more difficult to turn things around. And that's really what our work is is to try to find that in for people, connect with that why, so that you don't have to get things that bad to change, right? Because when all boils down to it, you know, everybody wants to have health. I mean, our goal is not to be the richest man in the graveyard, but that's what many people are doing. You know, we're striving and putting so much of our life energy towards a job to try to make money and end up losing our health in the process, right? And then end up getting in touch with guys like you to try to get their health back and spending all their money again, right? So it's this crazy, vicious circle. Very and true. We are work right now working and being examples that you can have it all in the process. It might take a little bit more strategic planning. Absolutely. That's part of the human psyche and our gift, this prefrontal cortex we have to be able to map things out, to be able to you know, uh, use our reticular activating system, reticular cortex, to point out specific goal points and have that part of our brain scanning for things to help us to achieve our goals. That's what we're designed for. But so often we forfeit that in the name of trying to get a dollar, right? And not to so negate the, fa the fact that that matters, right? Uh, shout out to 50 Cent, you know, like get rich or die, try, I get it, all right? But we can do that in a way, like he said, he's got a family, he's got a home, he's got multiple businesses, he just wrote a book. And a dog. Do you understand? <laughs> uh, writing a book can be one of the most unhealthy yeah. ventures, endeavors, you know, because of so much time, just you with that computer, you know. But he's been able to structure his life in such a way that his health has been a priority. And he shares that with people. And we all have that as a possibility. And you said something too, Sean. You said find that why, right? Find that motivation. For me, you know, it was it was my kids for it was my kids when they were born. I'm like, man, I got to I got to I got to do something right. I know you've got kids and so you can relate. Yeah. And many more people probably have kids who are listening. Your kids are watching you. They are watching every move you make and they're picking up on everything you do. I get people all the time that say, gosh, your kids eat. You know, my, my son comes asking for bone broth. He mm. asks for BCAAs. Oh. He asks for sweet potato. They eat avocado by the spoonful. 
right? And everybody comes to me and says, gosh, I wish I could get my kids to eat like this. First thing I say, how are you eating? Because they're eating how you're eating. Oh, you just burn said it, bro. Burn is good. <laughs> you're like, say, burn. burn. Right. And that's what it really is, guys. Like, right? and that this is why, <laughs> and I love this question. I'm, I love that this brought this out. The Model Health Show, you know, and walking, talking, being the representation of what's possible, right? Because so many of us have these grandiose ideas about, you know, what we're going to do, you know, in the lives of other people, it's specifically for our kids. The number one thing is what you're doing, you know, because I remember <laughs> that that commercial for uh, Say No to Drugs and like the the dad comes in, he's like found the little boy's like drug stash, his little weed stash. He's like, what is this? What is this? He comes in his room and, and his son's like, I saw you do it. <laughs> I saw you do it, dad. And it's just like, yeah. And he just kind of, you know, then the commercial fades to black or whatever because it hits him like, oh, wow. Well, I guess he's been watching me. Our kids are always watching us. Our family is always watching us. Even if they're not falling, quote, in line with what you want them to do, the best thing that you can do is to be the best version of yourself. I'm going to give you one more example about that, right? Because it hold, it, I hold this so close because I've got such, you know, the kids are our future, man. Like, you know, kids are, they're growing up. I mean, they're, they're more obese, right? Kids are getting diabetes at younger ages. Yeah. Like, this is really, this is almost, this is personal for me. You know, my kids... You know, they're on their iPads every once in a while. We try to limit it. And I, and whenever they're on their iPads, I'm always reading a book, right? I'm not, hey, you guys need to read a book. I'm just reading a book. Mm -hmm. There's only one way to create change, and that's through leadership. Finally, right, after a year maybe, my son, instead of picking up his iPad the other day, grabbed a book. Mm -hmm. I didn't say he needed to grab a book. Yeah. I just kept reaching for the book. And now he starts reaching for the book. Love it, man. How, how old are your children? Um, I've got a two-year-old. He's about to be three. And then I've got a four-year-old who turns five in September. Oh, yeah. Perfect, Very perfect. Nice. Well, man, so the Sweet Potato Diet now available in bookstores and online. Or just can you let everybody know where they can find the book and pick up a copy like today? Yeah, so it's at Barnes & Noble. Um, I believe it's at Books A Million. Uh, I know it's on Amazon. That's usually where everybody goes. Sweetpotatodiet.com. I've got a site dedicated to this. Um, it's got recipes there. There's a three-day eating plan. If you want to take it through a test drive, um, you get a couple of recipes. There's actually a couple of recipes on that list that are not even in the book. There's a sweet potato. Listen, there's a sweet potato hummus that mm. is to die for. Oh, man. To die for. Oh, so, man. yeah, I'm all in. You know, if you follow me on social media, and, and I know you do, Sean, like I eat sweet potatoes. They're they are 100% my carb source. They're almost 100% of my kids' carb sources. And um, it's changed my life. It's changed my life. And I'm just, I'm excited and I'm really appreciative of, of the opportunity to share this with your audience. Hey, man, it's my pleasure to have you on. I appreciate you. Uh, you're somebody that I consider a, a friend and who's doing amazing things in the world. And uh, I, I just really looking forward to, to what you're going to do next, man. And it just... I want to see you crush it with the sweet potato diet, man, and just reach as many people as possible because the stories, what's already happened is phenomenal, and I just think it's going to get a lot bigger. So thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the show today. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. I appreciate you immensely for taking action because just by you listening to this episode shows that you are somebody who is dedicated to becoming the best version of yourself. You want to be more. You want to have more. You want to do more. And that is a good thing. You know, we want to appreciate that about you because that's what really drives us to evolve as a human species. You know, it's not, life is always moving forward. You literally cannot stay the same and stay where you are because in a way you're going backwards. You can't just stay the same. Life is continuing to move forward. And so we need to move forward with that and always looking for spots that we can uh, improve our, our personal development, improve our health improve our relationships, you know, our emotional fitness, right? And also, of course, tying in work that we love as much as, as we can and what kind of gift that we're giving back to the world. And Michael has found that. He's somebody who has really dialed that in and kind of out of his own desperation, but he went, he went ham sandwich on it <laughs> and building this kind of empire mm -hmm. now. And in the process, it was through him getting fit and him feeling this feeling. And I know there are many people listening right now like, you change your life and your health and it's like you want to tell other people about it. 
you can do that, you know, and let Michael be a great example. I would highly recommend you follow him and see what he's up to. Uh, so we'll put all of his social media channels in the show notes as well as, and of course, the book, The Sweet Potato Diet. And again, keep in mind that this is all about what works best for you. You know, there's many different uh, diet programs out there. And even though the word diet, and I'm glad he kind of mentioned this, is not necessarily, this isn't a diet. A diet is just a way of eating. But that word can bring up some kind of weird connotations to it, you know, of deprivation restriction. This is not that no. for sure. And there are many other amazing diet programs out there from this diet to, uh, I've mentioned the ketogenic diet before. We've got incredible experts who've been on with their awesome cookbooks from the Wheat Belly Cookbook to Natalie Jill's cookbook. Lots of different things to, ch to choose from, but it's about identifying what works best for you, you know. So maybe, so like you were like Michael, and you still are, like, sweet potato, I, I, no, I, no, thank you, <laughs> you know. But there, this protocol is based on real food. And you can slip in a lot of different carb sources for different meals, you know, but it's really about the message and what Michael's providing. If you're into sweet potatoes like I am, for sure, I mean, my goodness, these recipes are stupid good, man. I can't believe some of these things, like the, the brownies, for example, yeah, yeah. never heard of such things. <laughs> like what kind of evil good scientists would think something <laughs> up like this, right? And it's all there for you in a way that makes sense, in a way that's structured, gives you a plan for execution. That's what he's great at. He's great at delivering those plans for execution. And so, again, it's about doing what's best for you and employing this. Carb cycling is something I've been doing myself personally for quite a long time. And so those days when I am doing a, a stronger metabolic load, um, you know, the deadlift day, the squats and all that good stuff, I'm, I'm ratcheting up on the carbohydrates. And some days like today, for example, where I'm just in the studio with my studio, boo, you know, we're making magic happen, having great guests on, you know, but I'm not lifting necessarily. I'm kind of lifting these mental muscles. Yeah. Sometimes after the show, I do like, you know what? I need a little, a little treat session, treat okay. yourself. Okay. But generally what I'm looking for on a day like today, this is going to be my lower carb slash no, no kind of traditional carb day where I'm not eating potatoes and rice and things like that. I'm not, I'm not hitting the gym, you know, so I'm good. And actually I'm feeding my body a little bit more brain nutrients, yeah. you know, so, and this is a good time to bring in some of the fermented veggies and things like that. That's what I have for breakfast, you know, two different kinds of veggies. I had the oh, Brussels yeah? sprouts okay. and, <laughs> and the sauerkraut, know, you know, a little you avocado do. protein yeah. source of your choice could be some eggs, could be some, mm. you know, some sausages, whatever it might be for you. But it's really about, again, structuring things in a way that works. So that's for me. So Wednesdays, Wednesdays, that's my no traditional carb day. Okay. That's a day that I generally don't eat carbs. That's our special right? day. Mm -hmm. And so, but I'm <laughs> sharp. Yeah. And it's because my body's good. Like I've replenished my muscle glycogen. Now I'm going to, in tomorrow's workout, guess what? I'm going to be right there at the edge. My body's going to start to pull from stored body fat mm -hmm. faster because it doesn't have this LIFO, FIFO, right? Last in, first out where I bring in the carbs and they're going to be the first thing my body uses instead of this body fat, right? So employ these strategies. Smart. Check out his book, The Sweet Potato Diet. Make sure to follow Michael. He is a beast. <laughs> and you're definitely going to be pumped up at what you learn from him. I appreciate you guys so much. Take care. Have an amazing day. And I'll talk with you soon.